Okay guys, so we've talked about cardiac output training. We've talked about what it looks like, what it should feel like, if you see your clients doing it, what they should feel like, the response that they should be getting from that, and how to really keep the intent of that work intact. One thing it's important to note with all programming, that if the intent does not stay intact, specifically with conditioning work, we run the long-term risk of overtraining. It might not happen right away, but maybe people are doing this incorrectly. Maybe they're going way outside of the recommended range because again, most people are programmed that they have to work hard to get better results. And what happens is this work starts to bleed into other sessions. There's a level of central fatigue that exists when you do high intensity conditioning. So if we do this work incorrectly, then we run long-term risks. If we do it correctly, then we not only improve recovery, but we improve the aerobic system. And that carries over to all of our other higher skill or higher demand measures like our max effort lifts, our anaerobic conditioning. If you do CrossFit, CrossFit specific workouts, this method will do it. It will do it all. Um, and I've seen it happen with literally thousands of people, okay, including myself. I've seen the best gains I've ever seen with myself, even with CrossFit, with just including cardiac output method in my programming on a consistent basis. And that's even compared to when I was training to try to make regionals and we were training, you know, 10 plus hours a week. My conditioning sucked then because I was training so far outside of the correct range to improve cardiac output. I wasn't getting those adaptations and there's just a lot of other things that were probably not going right with the conditioning back then. But that's another story. What I want to show you now is how to program this work for your clients or for yourself if you're trying it out for the first time. I will say that what happens usually is that people go too far down the rabbit hole. They try to make it super creative. They try to uh, really try to reinvent the wheel. We can't really do that with this work, okay? There are some very, there is some variability and I'm gonna show you what we use and how we keep it, I guess, somewhat interesting. But just remember that not all training is going to be super fun. I don't love doing these sessions. I will be completely honest with you. Thursdays are not my favorite day because I don't like doing steady state cardio. However, I've seen the results. I know how I feel. I know that even on that day, even if I wanted to, I usually don't, I'm not super motivated to do a hard workout after three days of pretty decently hard training. So, um, you know, for me, if I had my, my choice and I could still get the same adaptations, I'd probably just take a rest day, but I do see that there is a huge benefit from this personally. So I basically make myself do it. Now, how I vary it keeps it a little more interesting. I'm going to show you a couple ways. First one is very simple. We're thinking about 30 minutes, right? We know that. Um, and again, you could go as high as 60 minutes, but remember that 60 minutes for most people that are training for general fitness is going to be a long period of time. I like to start with 30 minutes for most people and even go as low as 20 for someone that's deconditioned. 30 minutes is kind of the sweet spot. We'll go as high as 40, but remember, we don't want people to see this and just skip it because it's too long. Now, on the other hand, if you're doing programming this work for someone that is an endurance athlete, maybe they are already have a big background with endurance sports like half marathons or even full marathons, 60 minutes is no problem for them. They can do that and it's not even a huge issue. They're not going to have the same setbacks mentally seeing that work as someone that's not an endurance athlete. But again, we're speaking more general terms right now. So 30 minutes is what we're going to stay with for today. So obvious option is two rounds of five minute bike, five minute row and then five minute jog okay this keeps it a little more interesting jogging tends to be very subjective okay someone might have no issue jogging whereas someone they they could do 10 minutes of total jogging throughout the course of this workout and they might be very sore from it keep that in mind with your programming i would really like to see another option here but we have to work with what we have okay so that's one way to go about it and again, remember, the intent needs to stay intact. Heart rate needs to be 130 to 150 for most people, and it needs to be somewhat conversational. This is a good way to do it. Another way that I really like, and this gives you a little bit more variability, is using an EMOM with three different movements. So 50 seconds bike, minute two, 50 second row, or it could be a treadmill, and then minute three would be 50 second single unders. Single unders. 
For the right person, it's a great option. It's gonna keep the heart rate where it needs to be. For someone that's overweight, not a great option. A lot of impact from that. So that's one way that you could go about it. I have done this personally. I program this one for my, my individual clients. And I love it because it gives me, I'm not on one, any one piece of equipment for too long where it's just kind of like, this sucks. I don't want to be on this bike for 15 minutes straight. And there are some days where I will just get on the bike for 30 minutes because I don't feel like thinking and I just want to do something that's very mindless. That's one way to do it. I might get off the bike every 10 minutes and you know, do some band work just to kind of break it up a little bit. But 30 minutes on the bike, I've also done 15 Air Runner 15 bike. Again, jogging for extended lengths of time for a lot of people is going to elicit some delayed onset muscle soreness. I know it does for me specifically in my uh, ankles and calves. So those are some things to consider. But what I will say is that number one, if we can use cyclical measures, we can keep the heart rate in the correct range. We're going to have great things happen by using this method. Remember, you have to build the value in it. If you're programming this in a group setting, it's going to be very challenging because you have so many people that just want to go hard every day. So you re really have to do a great job at educating people. We use cardiac output style work in our group training, but we don't necessarily call it that all the time. There are certain points in time where we will do work that looks just like this. But a lot of times I have to get a little more creative with do using different movements. And is it the best doing that? No, because I'd rather have it more consistent across more people. And the way we do that is just use cyclical measures. But that's a different situation. There's a different psychology there. And that's why I prefer using this with my individuals. My individuals, there's no pushback. They know what it is. They know how to do it. They know why they're doing it. And they do it. Pretty simple, right? Group training, it's, it's hard, all right? So um, this is why I'm telling you guys how to do this because you have to start telling people the why behind it. With group, you get into other issues like, oh, what if people don't come certain days or what if that's their only day? This work is beneficial for anyone. I don't care what days they come. It's beneficial for anyone, all right? It's gonna be more beneficial than a lot of the other higher, higher skill things that a lot of gyms are prioritizing. That's a talk for another day and I'm sure we're gonna get into that at some point. Um, but for right now, I just want to make sure you guys understand it, know how to program it, and feel comfortable implementing this into your plan. I would always recommend you experiment first before you give it to your clients. Now, of course, you don't have to experiment with every single workout, but this is a method that you should understand and that you should really include in your own program design um, because that will only help you not only see the value in it, but build a value in it with your clients.